When people think of Kafka, they think scale. But what's actually happening under the hood that lets Kafka handle millions of messages per second without breaking a sweat? In this video, we're going deep into how Apache Kafka is architected for high throughput. Not just in theory, but in real world production systems where performance and reliability aren't optional. From the way Kafka splits data into partitions for parallel processing, to how it leverages sequential disk writes and zero copy transfers, to bypassing traditional IO bottlenecks, every design choice is intentional and built for speed. We'll talk about how message batching, compression, and the pull-based consumer model allows Kafka to scale smoothly even as your data volume explodes. And we'll cover optimizations like asynchronous replication, distributed load balancing, and TCP-based networking, all of which keep Kafka blazing fast, even in the face of hardware failures or surging traffic. Whether you're a backend engineer, architect, or just curious about why Kafka is the backbone of so many modern data systems, this breakdown will give you a clear mental model of how Kafka achieves massive throughput without compromise. Let's get into it. So first things first, Kafka has partitioning ability, where Kafka divides topics into partitions, allowing messages to be produced and consumed in parallel. So more partitions is equal to higher parallelism is equal to higher throughput. Let's take an example of a topic with five partitions that can have five consumers consuming messages in parallel. Second is sequential disk writes. So Kafka writes data sequentially to disk, making it orders of magnitude faster than traditional databases that rely on random disk writes. This is enabled by Linux page cache and log structured storage. Then we have zero copy, where Kafka avoids unnecessary memory copies when sending data over the network. It uses send file syscall to transfer data directly from disk to the network without CPU overhead. Then we have message batching and compression. Kafka batches messages before writing to disk or sending over the network. Batching improves disk IO performance and reduces network overload. And the supported compression algorithms like Snappy, LZ4, ZSTD minimize data transfer size. We also have asynchronous replication where Kafka replicates data asynchronously across brokers to ensure fault tolerance. And this feature prevents bottlenecks that would occur in synchronous replication. You also have a consumer pull model where consumers pull messages from Kafka at their own pace rather than being pushed data. This prevents overload and allows efficient back pressure handling, which is what we saw in the previous video about Kafka back pressure. Then we have distributed load balancing. Kafka brokers automatically balance partition leadership to ensure no single broker is overloaded. And leader brokers handle writes while followers handle reads. We also have log compaction where Kafka does not delete all messages immediately. It follows a log compaction strategy. This means consumers can reprocess all messages without overloading the system. Kafka also has high performance networking where Kafka is optimized for high throughput networking using TCP IP rather than HTTP. It supports high throughput persistent connections, which are basically avoiding handshake overhead in every single request. You also have fault tolerance and replication. So Kafka replicates messages across brokers to ensure data durability. Even if a broker fails, data remains available without impacting throughput. So we've heard that Kafka handles millions of messages per second. But in this video, we broke down exactly what happens behind the scenes that enables Kafka to have a high throughput. We saw 10 different features. I already have videos for how Kafka works, Kafka Golang implementation, handling back pressure in Kafka, and today's video, which is high throughput with Kafka. I'll be posting more videos about Kafka internals and system design concepts in general. Make sure you follow this channel. If you like such concepts and would like to dive deeper into system design, then I have some great news for you. I'm starting a new engineering leadership cohort, which is meant for people aiming for engineering leadership positions. It starts on 1st June 2025, and we learn system design, cloud architecture, data architecture, and all the awesome advanced topics you need to learn to prepare for an engineering leadership role. There's a link to the application form in the description of this video. Please fill it out if you're interested. We'll check if you're a good fit for the cohort, and then we'll take things forward. There are only a few seats, and it's a great opportunity to learn with other like-minded people. If you're watching this video after the 1st of June 2025, you don't need to worry, because I plan on having such cohorts every few months, so you can still fill the form. 
All right, I'll see you in the next one.